as we continue uh, in this Lenten season, obviously affected by sin, living in a sinful world, quarantine, uh, dealing with uh, the stressors of our own relationships, the stressors of uh, society, uh, and all these things, it's a good pause and remember uh, that Jesus came uh, in his way to accomplish the unthinkable, uh, to defeat all these problems, not by attacking them in day-to-day -day life, uh, but by taking sin, uh, by taking death, uh, and all of the consequences of them uh, to the cross and their uh, burying them so that in his resurrection we might have life. The Passion reading uh, for this evening is taken from Matthew chapter 27. We read what is entitled, Trial Before Pilate. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty coin, silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why it has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the thirty silver coins, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say. Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Do you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, don't, harm, don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Here ends the Passion lesson. We pray. Son of the living God and the true Son of man, your great love for us sinners showed its highest form when you were willing to bear the pain and shame of the cross in order to save us from everlasting death. 
Grant faithfulness to us that we ever treasure the love with which you loved us in making yourself an offering for our sin. Enable us through your spirit to follow the example of your love and humility by doing always what pleases our Father in heaven. Teach us to be loving and merciful so that we gladly help those who are in need and show patience and forgiveness toward those who sin against us. Do not allow us to be discouraged from such crosses as you may call upon us to bear for your name's sake. Give us confidence and boldness at all times to confess you as our Lord and Savior before an, ungod an ungodly world and nation. While we continue to live here, cause all sorrow, distress, sickness, persecution, and every trial and temptation we are called on to endure to purify our faith and draw us close to you. Throughout our lives, you have been a continual source of earthly blessing, and you always have richly blessed us with the comfort of forgiveness and with the wonderful hope of heaven. For these and all other blessings without number, our health, heartfelt thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. 